Hi there everybody and welcome to another video of my Mini R50 here, this is a 2001 and um, I'm going to be changing the oil and the oil filter. So just been running the engine for a little while um, just to get it up to temperature, warming, up, warming it up a little bit to drain the oil a little bit easier. Um, we're also going to check the, the um, coolant level and percentage transfers and I'm also going to show you where to top up some uh, screen wash fluid on this car. So um, I'm just going to switch off the car now and we can start looking at these things. Okay, so um, screen wash fluid. If we start with that, that would be the easiest. You get your bonnet open, you will find just above the one of the front wheels, in this case the driver's side here in the UK, there is this little cup with a little uh, picture of a windscreen and some water. And that, that's where you put your fluid for the screen wash. So I already put some on mine, just fairly full. This is the one I use, screen wash. I normally buy the concentrated one and mix it myself because I'm doing cars all the time so it works out a little bit cheaper but you can work out you can buy the ready mixed um, fluid and just pour it in there you don't have to mix it yourself and uh, they're fairly cheap so it's better to have the proper fluid rather than just water or some people tend to put um, washing up liquid and the problem with just water is that it will freeze and then you won't have any water coming out or if you mix it with washing up liquid it will also um, freeze or it would also become a bit sort of jelly with time and that kind of a jelly blocks your jets so just buy the proper stuff it's cheap enough not a big deal um, I know times are, are tough, but uh, also better be safe and sorry, so always weigh the balance. Um, next, we're going to check the coolant. In this car, if you have one of these, you may find that this tank here, that's where the coolant goes, in that expansion tank there, and that's where we can check it. Um, Sometimes that tank is really dirty and you can't really see where your level is, but shining a light on the tank can help. So I'm going to shine my light and you'll see the coolant just uh, on the side there you can see the mark. So I'm going to open this as well. I'm going to put my light on top of that. <laughs> That's a lot easier and you can see the coolant in this case is just above the max you can see the, the two lines there one line is for the minimum one line is for the maximum so minimum and max mine is just above the max just there so I topped it up the other day because that was on the minimum and I couldn't quite see it really but uh, it, I thought there was no liquid there at all but it turns out that there was um, now having established that the coolant level is at a good level if it isn't uh, if it's at the minimum you can top it up if it's below the minimum or no fluid at all then we need to start checking for an, a leak. There could be a leak somewhere, but you could always top it up and then see how you get on. Um, now, always being careful, obviously, that you don't the car doesn't overheat. But that's another matter and a video for an, another case scenario. In this case, just checking the level, and we're going to check the percentage of antifreeze with this little gadget here. So I'm just going to suck some of that antifreeze from there and we're going to see 
if there is any antifreeze in here. Now, I can see that uh, one, my the fluid is really dirty, and also the antifreeze percentage is is not reading. It hasn't even moved that much. It's, it's at minus five. Um, so, to be honest, um, having look at this, I I think I need to ultimately change the coolant in this car because um, it's not really, it is a bit dirty and I don't really know how much coolant there is there still really low reading just minus five, minus I don't know seven so I'm not particularly happy with that if temperatures reached minus 10 then that will freeze so I am aiming to be at at least minus 25 or so um, so that will be a video for another day I'm going to drain the coolant and refill uh, the coolant in this car we're gonna put some so I need to find out what antifreeze is recommended for this car. Um, from what I can see, that is a bit orangey, um, but we'll see. Um, and also, uh, we're gonna put, normally I put 50-50, 50% antifreeze, 50% coolant in it. So that way we are safe for winter. Um, and if that freezes, if there is more water there and it freezes, then it can damage the engine, it can damage the water pump, it can damage different things. So, um, better to be safe than sorry again, um, or have costly repairs. <laughs> so, um, like I said, the level is good, but the antifreeze percentage is not. So, and also, maybe I'm gonna wash this tank because it looks really dirty. Um, but Again, this car is 23 years old, so um, we can expect little things like that. It's not the end of days. Um, so, having established that, we can move on to doing the oil and the oil filter. So the oil filter I have for this car is this one here, OX175D. This one I'm gonna use and also I'm gonna put some 5W30 oil in there but obviously before I put any oil in there we need to remove the filter and we need to drain the system uh, the filter in this car is sitting right at the back right at the back a bit of an awkward uh, position but we'll try to find it if I can show you where it is it's sitting there you can just about see the top bit and we need a 36 mil socket to open that so that fits there and then you want to open it it can be a little bit hard so make sure you don't break your hand like I just did <laughs> just don't hurt yourself uh, however if you're using two hands it's always a little bit easier it can be hard to to open this one it gets really stuck so you have to push quite hard to get it open um, now uh, I usually get some oil drips from here always whenever I do these cars the uh, filters at such an angle 
that it does drip a little bit of oil. So I'm gonna try to be really as careful as possible just to open the, the filter and uh, allow a little bit of air to go in the system via the filter before taking it out so it so the oil that's in there can drain into the sump and that way maybe we can avoid oil dripping down okay so technically that's open maybe a little bit of oil came out i'm not sure <laughs> we'll find out in a minute and uh, also i am going to pull the dipstick yeah. Get my dipstick up there and also open the oil filler cap here. And leave it there as well. So that will just allow some air into the system um, while we drain the oil from underneath. So it's a little bit easier to drain the oil and also a little bit faster um, and another thing is if you're working outside it could be windy, it could be raining, it could be anything so you don't leave the oil filler cap anywhere because anything can go in there so um, or if you put it to one side then just uh, make sure you cover the hole with some paper or something and same with the uh, filter, which we are going to take out in a minute. Um, if you take it out, there's a hole there that's left. And things can go into that hole, like leaves or anything like that, um, if it's windy. Okay, so I left the filter there a few minutes, so now I'm going to take it out. And uh, hopefully, there's not going to be a mess of oil. So as I remove that, I could see some oil dripping from there. Um, so if you're, if you're working on your driveway, make sure you get some paper under there um, so you don't obviously make a mess on your driveway. In this case, I have uh, some cardboard underneath this car. Um, so I'm not too bothered about that. It's just uh, uh, trying to avoid the mess a little bit, but maybe you need to leave the filter there a few more minutes so it drains even more. Anyway, filters out. Now we can get the car up and uh, drain the oil. So, as you can see, some of the oil dripped onto my cardboard there. Uh, that's why if you're working on your lovely driveway, <laughs> make sure you put some paper or something underneath. Um, now, get yourself an oil pan and uh, we are going to drain the oil here so looking at the car from under here the oil sump is just there and the drain bolt is sitting right there and we need a 14 mil socket for that no a 13 mil socket Just remember, if the car's been running a lot, that oil can be very hot, so don't burn yourself. In this case, I warmed up the engine a little bit. So the oil can drain a bit faster.
so I have a feeling there wasn't much oil in this car. <laughs> uh, it may not have been serviced for a while, plus that oil is very black. So um, anyway, I'm going to let that um, drain. In the meantime, we'll take care of the filter here. So we have our filter and we can take it out of there, pull it out, still some oil in there. Just gonna give it a little bit of a clean. You can inspect these as well for any damage because we're going to reuse this and uh, this one looks okay. Just refit it. Should be fine. But you can buy new ones of these if you want to change it. And another thing, we're going to take out this O-ring. gonna dispose of that uh, as we should have a new one here and we do so get that on there And I'm just going to put a little bit of grease around this O-ring. That's just so when we put this back onto the housing, that uh, O-ring will slide nicely around it and it won't get caught or damaged. And again, maybe people will disagree, but uh, I find it that way it goes in a little bit easier. Okay, so now we need to push this in there. And sometimes it can be a little bit hard. So I normally just uh, push this in a little bit. So we can get it in here. Okay, that is in. So that is now ready to be refitted and uh, as soon as that stops, um, the oil stops raining, we'll, uh, we'll get on with it. Okay, I'm ready to refit that, but uh, just one more thing before I refit this. In the back of this, it says 25 Newton meters. So if you have a torque wrench, torque that to 25 newton meters that way you're not going to damage anything um, and you know how much to tighten it and now I have my sun plug bolt here and I fit that in there and again this normally get tightened to similar 25-30 newton meters No more than that. Some are even less. Some, some of these these days are like really low. Uh, but this is again, this is a 22 years old car, so somewhere along the 20, 25 newton meters for that will do. Um, don't just don't over tighten it, or don't damage it, because you want to avoid yourself issues. So if you're not sure, just tighten it a little bit. If you get any oil drips. 
and you can always tighten it a little bit more. But you're not going to get oil gushing out of there, it's just going to be a tiny drip. And another thing, I have some uh, brake cleaner here and I'm going to clean <laughs> all the uh, oil that dripped from the oil fed housing around uh, this area. So just go ahead and clean um, if you if you have the same <laughs> issue, if you made a mess like me, then uh, just go ahead and clean it. There will be some oil that's gone all around, even the drive shaft and whatnot. So just go ahead and clean it, and then we're gonna lower the car and get some oil in it. Okay, got the car down. Now we can refit our oil filter. We know it goes down here. Sometimes it can be a bit of a fiddle to get this in. So basically you need to push it in while you screw it on. And that can be a bit of a, a pain. doable okay so it looks like I'm gonna be fiddling with that for a little while so we'll get back to when we fit when we put some oil in <laughs> so it took me a little while but uh, basically with one hand you need to press onto the filter and turn it so it's it's a bit of a pain to be honest it takes a little while to get it in but definitely don't force it in a, a couple of times I got it screwed in a little bit and I could feel with my fingers that it was going in at an angle. So if I was to force it with a tool, I will damage it. So just feel with your finger around the gap of the filter that is evenly going in. And uh, try to screw it as much as you can with your hand. You won't be able to screw it that much, but a little bit. And then feel around it, have a look, and then use your tool. Otherwise you can damage it. You shouldn't really feel any resistance at all either when you use your tool. It should be fairly smooth. And as we said, 25 newton meters. And now we can top up some oil. So, this car takes 4.5 liters. So, depending where you live, um, you can choose the viscosity. Uh, I'm using 5W30 as mentioned, and uh, obviously, if you're living somewhere very cold, like the North South Pole, Alaska. I don't know how cold it, it gets out there, but you would be choosing uh, perhaps slightly thinner oil. And uh, vice versa, if you're living in the Sahara Desert, then perhaps you choose slightly thicker oil 10W40, 15W40. But here in the UK, no, not getting extremes, so we can go with 5W30, 20W30, and so on. So 
so 4.5 We have 4.5 in there. Happy days. And uh, now we can check our dipstick. Uh, sorry, actually I'm gonna wipe it first and then, and then we'll check it. Um, but let me just show you here. We have a... Uh, in this dipstick we have a max mark you can just about see it there a max and a min so minimum here maximum there and we're gonna aiming to be towards the max in any case so um, let's see where this oil is at the moment and it might be a little bit more than than max because some of that oil will go into the oil filter housing and it will remain there. Okay, so you can just see maybe where this is at. So it's actually where it says max. You can just see the shine of the oil covering the max bit. And we want it to be at the line just down there. So there's a little line there. And that's where we want it to be. So that's about right. Once we run the engine, oil will go down a little bit because it will go, as I said, into the oil filter housing and it will remain there. So that's pretty much it really. I'm going to start the cut now. Low battery. Okay, I just got the jump starter connected, so I'm gonna start the cut now. Okay, that's it. So, um, let it run for a few minutes. Make sure there's no major oil leaks underneath from the filter, from anywhere, and uh, you're pretty much done. So, having said that, I hope this video helps, don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.